all put your hands together. Along the way, along the 
them and then demonstrate them all for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. We thank God for you. I was telling Pastor, he was, he looks good. He's been losing a whole lot of weight. Amen. And he says, he's, Pastor, I've lost 35 and got these many more to go. And, and I kind of chuckled and then I shared how it was 22 years ago that I was last able to touch a, the rim of a basketball. And I said, Pastor, you don't have that many years left. He said, oh, I'm going to get there. He said, I got about five old dunks in me. I said, uh, I, I don't know, I'm praying for you. Because I remember when I was going down here and I was sharing that every year, you know, when I get to family reunions, I always race somebody that I was racing a 20-year-old. Then I start racing a 16-year-old. And, and I said that because on last week, I volunteered for the Reds community thing with the youth, and, and uh, Elena was out there. She said, hey, Pastor Rick, and yeah. And, she, and so uh, they had the Castellinis, the owner of the Reds, and Brian Price, all of them out there. And so we had her running the bases, and I said, well, I'm going to run the bases with you just to show you I still got it. And uh, she beat me. <laughs> I came close, round and third, I started to knock her down. <laughs> and they had the news people watching. I said, I can't let this little girl beat me. <laughs> and, uh, I started to knock her down, but she beat me. And so... Uh, just keep on living and you all will get that age too. Amen. And so I remember when I used to be young. So I won't hold you. Turn turn with me to the book of Jonah. Y'all got it? All right, Jonah chapter one. Amen. Jonah chapter one, I'll begin reading at verse one. Verse 6 of that text says that while they were on the brink of death, Jonah was sleeping. And so I want to consider, just for a topical subject, how can America sleep at a time as this? And for the sake of short titles, I want you to also consider the question, how can the church sleep when we're in a storm? And just so that you don't get too comfortable, let me just drive down your street and say, how can you sleep at a time as this? Look at your neighbor and say, you better wake up. My brothers and my sisters, we are living at a time where no matter how you categorize yourself, us, we, them, or me, we find ourselves in a storm. Whether it be race relations, social status, religious affiliations, we're all in a storm. White, black, male, female, old, young, Democrat, Republican, skinhead, or grateful dead, we are in a storm. Our nation is in a storm, and the church is in a storm. And since the storm is obvious, the question is, how can the church sleep? How can America sleep at a time like this? Yeah. These folks were on the ship and Jonah was asleep and they couldn't understand. How can you sleep and we're all perishing? How can you sleep when you see that we are in a storm? Yeah. Mothers, wives, children who have lost their fathers, sons, spouses, loved ones to senseless murders are begging for help. Policemen being murdered in the line of duty. Citizens being murdered by those charged to even uphold a duty. One candidate says that not only can he fix it, but this person is arrogant enough to say that he's the only person that can fix it in his address. The minute the solution is I and not we, that in itself says that it's guaranteed to be worse. I'm willing to hear his plan, but so far the only thing I've heard is that he want to go back to the very days that plunged us into this problem. See, our Pledge of Allegiance acknowledges the source of our strength and success. It says, what well, united we stand and divided we fall. And yet America is determined to be a nation where some people are still less valued. 
The church is even still determined to be a social club that has more clicks than old McDonald's. Y'all heard me say that. You go to some church and all they got clicks and social clubs. A click, click here and a click, click there. Here, click, there, click. That's all churches have. Is old. I said, you got more clicks than old McDonald's farm. And then we wonder why the church is divided. We wonder why our nation is divided. And then we wonder why we're in a storm. The vow not to discriminate against people of race, creed, and religion of color. It seems like there's only been a lip service. Yeah. The phrase united with stand is just a phrase to recite. For some folks, it's just been any, it has been any no kind of belief in what they really stand in. And now the roosters have come home to roost. And we find ourselves, America find ourselves, the church find ourselves in a storm. And yet the church, white and black churches, both are, are guilty. The very people that God has chosen to use is sleeping. In the midst of a storm, America has chosen to sleep. In the midst of a storm, the church finds itself in the corner, in the bottom of the deck with his head stuck in the sand, just like Jonah was on the boat. The very folks God has chosen, the church, you know, the church, the bride of Christ, when he snipped the engagement ring on the bride on the night that he was betrayed. And you know how they get married in the Jewish days. They give a toast and they do that. And they had a drink of wine and they make a promise. And, and Jesus says, this cup, I won't fulfill it until I fulfill it new. And again, he put the engagement ring on the church's finger that night. Made that first toast. He said, I'm going to do that second toast at the rapture. The church, the bride of Christ. The one who got engaged, the one who Jesus says was as valuable to him as a hidden pearl. The organism whom Jesus spoke and says, upon this rock, I established the church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Yeah. The bride in Jesus, whom Jesus laid down his life for. The body of baptized believers. You, say, you ask people what the church, they tell you all that. They say, it's the body of Christ. It's the bride of Christ. It's the body of baptized believers in Christ. We'll say all of that that Jesus says when he says, go there, go ye therefore. And what? He says, make, mark, and mature uh, believers. He says, baptize them, teach, and then teach them to observe all things, not some things. The church. The very folks who God has chosen, both white and black, yes. has gone to the bottom of the deck, over in the corner, over in the dark, and has gone fast to sleep while the nation is in a storm. Yeah. Why our little ones are in the storm. Why people being murdered in the storm. Policemen are being murdered in the storm. Homeless people in the storm. And God has called the church and the churches mm. sleep. Went down and got a ticket to Tarshish. Mm. Went down to the bottom of the deck. Went over in the corner of the deck. Went down in the remote part of the storm and has gone fast asleep. And they woke old Jonah and said, how in the world? I almost said the cuss word. How in the bad word can you sleep? And we're in a storm. In a good word. All right. Scratch that, D.D. Gordon. Jonah was sleeping. <laughs> But it wasn't because he had so much faith that he could sleep during the storm. And one day I will come up here and preach that you need to sleep during the storm. But that's a different sermon for a different topic in a different kind of circumstances. Amen? It wasn't because Jonah had faith. It was because he hated Ninevites so much that he refused to witness of the goodness of God to them. Jonah thought that he would play God and decide who was worthy of God's grace and mercy and who was not. You just heard Jalen sing the son. He thought I was worth keeping. Yeah. That's all of us. But yet Jonah tried to play God and decide who he thought was worthy of God's grace. Right. So he was all for the new Jim Crow laws. He was all for keeping poor Appalachian citizens. Ignorant and in the dark. He was all for tossing token carries to the Native Americans every now and then. When a diverse nation leaves out any segment of people, I don't care if it's Appalachians, Native American, it's not just black, we're headed for a storm. Yet we have systemic issues that instill fear and brainwash folks to think that one person should be more valued above another. 
I think about this animated movie, Zootopia. That's one of the ones I, that is pretty recent that I can brag about. Usually I see movies so old, my daughters and daddy don't say you saw it last week. He said, just say you saw it. Don't let folks know that you was five years behind the time. <laughs> hey, man. I was watching the pitch and I said, man, they ought to win an Academy Award. Then my daughter said, daddy, they did three years ago. Three years ago. But Zootopia is a newer one, hey, amen. And, and, and I recommend that everybody go out and look at that. Adults and children, you can borrow it free from the library. It is an animated film, but I guarantee you, you will like it because it's a film about a city of diverse animals that all get along. However, there was an evil group, and we'll just call them the Empire, that was instilling fear and convincing others that certain animals were the problem and should be less valued. They painted these animals as vicious and, and a threat to society. They knew how to put them on the 6 o'clock news with their hair uncombed and, and then the ones that couldn't speak good English and, and tried to display them as, 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 as less valuable. I declare you need to go out and see this movie. And, and, and it's got all this stuff in, in, in behind the scenes. But by circumstances in this movie, there was a unique partnership between a rabid police officer and the Red Fox Connor. Did anybody see that movie yet? It's just all right, so all all right, y'all know what I'm talking about. Let me make sure I got it right. Uh, it was a rabid police officer and a Red Fox con artist, and, and it was only through respecting each other's gifts and, and differences that they uncovered this conspiracy against a certain type of civilian. I said, look at this thing. Overcoming the empire, the people were able to realize that all animals, all lives matters. And unlike some Disney films that I hate, this film was a pretty good film. And it received several awards for its timely themes of prejudice and stereotypes. I promise you, I double dare you to go check that movie out. In this movie, in the midst of lazy leaders, it was actually the policemen that led the charge to essentially say, wake up, America. All right. Now in our text, I got 10 minutes left. You, left. you thought I wasn't going to touch the text. God had called the prophet Jonah to go to a strange land and for a strange people to preach. But Jonah was comfortable right where he was. He liked church. He liked us, you pastor. He liked singing. He liked praise dance. He liked coming inside these walls. But as long as he didn't have to do anything outside of the walls, Jonah was comfortable just then right where he was ignoring the outside world. He was comfortable with his little health insurance and, and didn't see why he needed to consider others. His children were grown and therefore he had no concern for the next generation. He believed that women didn't deserve equal play. Blacks were lazy and that policemen were supposed to shoot if they just had one ounce of fear of the situation. He said dumb things like 70% black or black murders are by another black and the murders by policemen is such a small percent that it should be overlooked, Giuliani. But, but then he said some just dumb enough to think that if the church just prayed, everything would be all right. I'm here to tell you, we can do all the praying. If that's all we do, everything is not going to be all right. Pastor says, sooner or later, we'll have to put some legs on our all right. I'm trying to get through the text. So when God commissioned him to go one way, he went another way. That's just like the prophets. That's just like all of them, except for Jose. We talked about them. You remember I told that God told, called Abraham, said, Abraham, I want to use you. Abraham said, oh, no, I'm too old to be used. You know? And God called Jeremiah. He said, oh, Jeremiah said, oh, no, Lord, I, I'm too young to talk. God called Moses and said, I, 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 I stutter, I can't talk. Abraham said, I'm too old to talk. Jeremiah said, I'm too young to talk. Moses says, I can't talk. Jonah just wouldn't talk. All right. God called Jonah and told him to go one way, and Jonah went the other way. <laughs> he tried to flee the presence of God, but God was just looking right at him. Young people, when you do things behind closed doors, God looking right at you. He says, I see better in the dark and the light anyway. <laughs> Jonah tried to flee the presence of God, but God was looking right at him. And the Bible says God spoke to the wind and said, I just want you to blow. He looked at the thunder and says, I just want you to roar. Jonah was going down to the size of the ship where the side of the size of the ship where he would least feel the effects of the storm. And that's what we do. 
He voted for the candidates that would give him the greatest cushion from reality. He sunk down into the conference of his 401k. He stuck his head in the sand of voter suppression. He hid in the corner of house bills after Senate bill and stand your ground. And after the wind began to blow, after the thunder began to roll, God spoke to the lightning and said, I just want you to flash. He said, I just want you. God spoke to the top. He said, I just want you to stand real high. He says, because I've got a man, I've got a nation, and I even got a church who's trying to run and think they can hide. Mm -hmm. So God called the storm on America. He called the storm on the nation, and he's called it on the church. Jonah thought he can go down into the bottom of the deck to hide from the face of God. Mm -hmm. And in like manner, churches are hiding from the charge, mm -hmm. hiding from the call. Hiding from the commission and even hiding from the command. And so if it sounds like the church and, and you don't want to make it personal, let me just say you. Amen. Right. Some of you all are hiding from the call. Right. Hiding from the charge. Right. Hiding from the commission. You and some of you all are even hiding from the command. Mm -hmm. wow. Hiding from the charge to seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Consider the fatherless and the widow. Hiding from the call to do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly before God. Hiding from the commandment to let judgment run down as waters and righteousness as a mighty stream. Yeah, that sounds good for the nation. It sounds good for the church, but God is saying that to us individually as well. See, the Bible says that Jesus came unto his own, meaning the Jews, and his own received to not, meaning they crucified him. God God didn't choose the Jews because they were special. They became special because God chose them first. God set up a nation. He said, I'm just going to create a nation, and I want this nation to be the people, the nation, that tell the rest of the world who the true and living God is. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But instead, the Jews whored after another God, whored after worldly God. Then they twisted and even added to the word of God, added requirements, rules, and regulations, and they found themselves in the storm, found themselves in deep mess. And so when the Messiah came to deliver them from oppression, some of them received him not. They crucified him. And so God put the Jews on hold and, and turned to the church, the Gentiles, to now be the called out group to tell the rest of the world who the true and living God is. So yes, God uses the church. He uses us as basic acts of kindness and ministry such as what I'm glad you asked, feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, fighting for the oppressed. Why? To draw, so God may draw people to himself, cause people to seek him, reveal spiritual truth, convict the world of guilt about sin, convict the world of righteousness. And when these things are not happening, I blame the church, not Republicans. Not Democrats, but I blame the church. Somebody is sleeping on the job. America is sleeping on the job. The church is sleeping on the job, and the church are made of Christians. And God says, some of us, let me read, some of you are sleeping on the job. The captain of the ship, they asked Jonah, I'm almost done. He said, how can you sleep and we're in a storm? It's time for America to wake up. Some of you all have to look, have a little age on there and heard of Earl Pitts, amen? Earl Pitts is this functional, fictional character performed by Gary Burbank, a radio personality. I know somebody know him from Cincinnati. He has this daily radio show, and, and he's a, like, like a country guy that's made of character. Pitts will go off on a rant and as, as seen from the redneck point of view. And he would say uneducated things and, and have a twisted mind and all this dumb stuff and crazy stuff. And then he hit a good punchline that kind of makes sense. And, and the solution of, of the point of that is that it's really not all that complex. And then he would always close his program by saying, wake up, America. And as funny or as dumb as he seems and, and plays, he will be right that it's not that hard. It's simply to love your neighbor as thyself. Right. Ben Carson had his own version. 
speaking of Ben Carson, <laughs> he had his own version of Wake Up America in his book, and I've excused my language just dumb enough to buy it. I did buy it, One Nation, but it was four years ago. It was his attempt and his version of Wake Up America. I won't bother to give you the highlights of, of what he thought the solution was. I'll just simply say that the number of delegates that he received during his campaign is indicative of his book. Amen? <laughs> <laughs> and he even though, and I even talked to him even 10 years ago, we had him out the GE one-on-one, -on -one. and he's a smart man, he's a great guy, right? And even though he had in good, intent, good intentions, I concluded that he himself needs to wake up. Amen? <laughs> All right. We won't slam him too hard. We'll slam him, but we won't slam him too hard. All right, all right. In our text, why y'all getting me off there? In our text, in close, in our text, when the storm came, the crew asked Jonah, who is your God? And that's a good question today because church folks can be confusing sometimes. And when we see the homeless and, 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 and folks in the church, how we treat one another, sometimes people in the world are really asking us, who is your God? We confuse them. We show stuff on the outside. We got t-shirts that say blessed and highly favors and fancy Bible covers and, and big crosses around our neck as if to say the bigger the cross, the better the Christian. And fancy cars and personalized license plates. You could tell when you pull it up in a black church because you see all the fancy slogans. Praise hallelujah and Jesus is my captain. Honk two times if you love Jesus. And so you can look at our license plates and know that you're in a black church, but yet, and yet when it comes to real ministry, America, in the church, they're in the corner, in the dark, in the bottom of the ship, in the midst of the storm, sleeping on the job. Jonah thought that if he was going to ignore God, that it was on him, and he alone would suffer the consequences. But that certainly makes a lot of sense and sounds nice if it was true. But my brothers and sisters, it's not true. It's not true. Jonah's decision to sleep on God was causing others to be in a storm. And if you don't get anything else today, you need to recognize that choosing to sleep on a job is not only hurting you, but others is going to perish because of you sleeping on, even in your relationship with God. When you do not do study the word of God, uh-oh, Choose to develop an intimate relationship with God. Uh-oh. Do not progress in your prayer life. Double. Uh-oh. You don't just hurt yourself. You're causing somebody else to perish. People are like, well, that's what I do, Pastor. You just leave my business alone. Let me tell you. No, when you don't do your job, other people are going to perish. It would be nice if just me paid the price when I sin. And I do sin. Amen. It would be nice if Gloria only paid the price for Gloria's sin. But no, when you don't do your job, other people are going to perish. Right. Jonah was sleeping, and he was causing a whole ship to go down. Mm -hmm. I've seen men do things cause a whole family to go down. i see seen moms do things that cause a whole family to go down. David did something wrong. He numbered the people. God told him the number, and God says, I'm going to kill off about 600. And all because David was this. All right. Yeah. Pastors can do things to cause it all right. Mm. Not us. <laughs> Other pastors. <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. All of us. All of us. I don't care what, what ministry you're in. Whether it's us and singing. Whatever it is. Parenting. When you're sleeping on the job, you can't cause others to perish. And if you don't get anything else, that's what Jonah was doing. I'm trying to get through this text. You can distance yourself, but so far... Eventually, you will recognize that you are stuck in the same boat. You can't split the boat in half and put some folks on one side and expect the boat to float float. You can't put blacks over there, Appalachians over here, Republicans there, rich over there, poor, and expect the boat to sink. No, we're all in the same boat. And sooner or later, the nation like now, sooner or later, the church like now is going to find itself in a storm. Jonah refused to listen to God. So God had to put Jonah in a position where Jonah could better hear. Mm -hmm. wow. I think I've said it, but we've seen that commercial about five, ten years ago. Somebody's trying to talk on the cell phone and, and, and they can't hear. And, 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 you're not coming through. And then the guy does this. He, 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 stay, take a look. He, can you hear me now? He moves his position. And so God says, maybe this hard head 
Negro's not hearing me. Maybe this youngin is not hearing me. Maybe the church is not hearing me. Maybe the nation is not. Maybe this rascal didn't hear what I said. It says maybe the lines of communication are not right. Maybe somebody is at the pos out of position. And God says, wait a minute, I'm a God. I'm immutable. I change not. I ain't got to move. And so he moves Jonah to a spot where Jonah could better hear. He said, Jonah, can you hear me now? And that's what God has to do to us sometimes. He says, I know what I told you to do. I know what ministry I gave you. I know what I told you to do. I know the call I've given you. I know the commission I give you. I know the commandment I give you. But maybe you're not hearing me. And so maybe just one of us is out of position. And he says, oh, wait a minute. I'm God. I'm immutable. I change not. And so he has to put us in a position where we can better hear. Well, my brothers and sisters, God has put the nation where we can better hear. He has put the church in a spot where we can better hear. And it's time for America to wake up. It's time for the church to wake up. It would be great if we were only hurting ourselves, but we're causing others to perish by sleeping. And God wants to use the church, and therefore the people in the church. God wants to use the church, the bride, the pearl, the body of Christ that Jesus cried for, died for. That's what God wants to use. And he's putting us in a position that he's saying, can you hear me now? It's time, church. It's time, America, to wake up. Amen. God bless you. God bless you.